We're going to start simple and work our way up. Along the way, you'll see some things SwiftUI makes easy and some things that are a little bit harder. Here is contentview.swift. And this is right now the only piece of UI inside our app. It's Xcode's default template code. There's not a lot of code, but it does tell us a lot. First, you can see that all pieces of UI in our code are structs. Second, you can see that these UI pieces of code all conform to the view protocol. Third, this protocol has a requirement. We provide a view body describing what's in the view. Fourth, that body returns some view. This is a Swift language feature called an opaque return type. And it means we're sending some kind of view back here. But we don't want to have to say exactly what. Then inside our content views body, the actual layout for the view, is uh, our layout. We're saying here there's an image with a globe picture inside, the text hello world, and around those, a V stack, a vertical stack that arranges its children one above the other. And finally, there are some method calls in here. We have image scale, we have foreground color, and we have padding. Now in SwiftUI, we call these modifiers because they modify the way the text view or the image view or the V stack look and act. Now, you should also see on the right of Xcode over here, this preview pane called the canvas. This actually updates as you change your code in real time. It's very, very fast. It makes it a great way to see changes as you work. If you don't see that right now, you can enable it by going to the editor menu and choosing this canvas option here. Now, in the event that preview area stops working, which will happen quite a bit to be honest with you, um, you want to press Option Command P on your keyboard to resume the canvas preview or press the little refresh icon up here when it appears. Now, in our app we're building, we don't want to have obviously Xcode's uh, default template stuff. Instead, we're going to have a list view showing a list of all the menu items we have available to buy. So I replace the contents of our body property here with list, then text, hello world. And I repeat that three times. And you can see as I've typed over here already, it's updating to be a list saying hello world. And that's fully interactive, by the way. You can just grab this, and move it around and scroll like you would do. It's a real live working version of our view right here. So as you can see in my preview, this is the uh, Swift UI equivalent of UIKit's UI table view or a UI collection view in uh, list mode. And in this case, we're saying, I want to show uh, some static data, just the word hello world again and again and again, like that. And by giving it three of these text views, the list interprets that as being three rows. We have three rows on our little table here. Now in our app, this list will contain all the menu items that can be ordered, and tapping on one of them will show a detailed view with more information where they can order that item. This works, again, just like in UIKit. We want to wrap our list, wrap our table in some kind of navigation control. Now in SwiftUI, this navigation control is called a navigation stack. And it combines in the UI kit equivalents of a UI navigation controller and a UI navigation bar in one place. The action of moving between screens and also the UI having a bar across the top here. To bring one in, what we're gonna do is wrap our list with a navigation stack like this. Navigation stack around the list, like that. And it looks the same, that's fine, but it happens because we haven't given it a title yet, so it looks like nothing's actually happening here yet, and that's fine. Now, earlier I mentioned that things like uh, image scale and padding were modifiers, and I said modifiers have that name, they modify the way our views look and work, and SwiftUI has many of these things, hundreds easily modifiers out there, and each one that does customize the behavior or look of a view in some particular way. Yes, I know modifiers look like regular Swift methods, but they are more complex because they actually change what they apply to somehow. In simple terms, if you have a, a text view like this one here and say, uh, I want to have some padding around you, you don't just get some text back that happens to have more space around it. You actually get a different type back entirely. In this case, we want to apply a new modifier called navigation title to our list view which means applying it after this closing brace for the list. And this will accept some kind of text to show in our navigation bar. So I'll say we have a navigation title of menu, like that. You can see immediately at the top, it applies and you can see menu, nice chunky text. 
Yes, this nav title modifier is attached to the list, not to the navigation stack. Do not put it here. You want to put it on the list itself. You can see it doesn't show it in show there at all, right? You want to put it on the list like that. That's where it should be. It's just like UI Kit, to be fair, we would have a title on our UI view controller, not try and set a title of a UI navigation controller. Okay. If you want now, you can go ahead and try running the app. Just press Command R to build and run. There you go. You can see it's the same thing we had in the simulator on the, on the right already. You can drag it around. It's real. It works like a UI kit app would do. Uh, one of the great things about Swift UI is that we get so much modern system behavior working out of the box. So we get things like the uh, large navigation bar titles just as standard. Now, static text like this one here works great when you have fixed list cells, so these rows happening. But in our case, we've got lots of menu items to load from that JSON file we added earlier on, these things right here. That's, we have things like a, a breakfast section, we have down here a main section, we have a, what else, crikey, a dessert section and more. There's lots of things here. We want to load all that menu data in from JSON and use that for our list items, rather than having to statically code everything. Fortunately, that's not actually too hard to accomplish. First, we're gonna load our data. Now the helper.swift file you imported in the very first step of this project includes code here that makes it easy to load data from JSON. This is perfect for loading our menu.json file. And so over in our content view, I'm gonna say, let menu be bundle.main dot decode and I decode an array of menu section dot self from the file name menu dot json like that next we're going to modify this list here so that rather than having fixed three rows it will instead go over each one of the sections of our menu breakfast lunch dessert and similar right this will be done using a for reach view which will loop over items in an array and repeat whatever it finds inside. So inside the list, I'm going to say for each menu like this, and then put our text inside that like this. Now you can see here it's complaining and that's fine under a second here. What we're seeing here when we have the open brace for the list and for the for each, this is actually the start of a closure. And the case of for each, Swift UI will pass into the closure each item from the menu. So we said load the menu sections, great. It'll tell us, okay, here's one section, what do you want to do with it? So we've got to make this better by saying section in. Give me the section you want to load. And that almost works, that's, that's better slightly, but there is one last thing we have to do because Swift UI needs to know how to identify every row inside our list. It needs to know exactly which row is which at all times. So we can add and remove things smoothly with animation if needed to. Now, when we had a static list, hello world, hello world, hello world, that wasn't a problem because it could see exactly that where there were three and where they were in our code directly. But now we have a dynamic list. We want to have many sections being loaded here, and now we're going to tell it what makes each section unique. What identifies it uniquely and stably, so we can see, oh, one's been moved or removed or added or whatever. Now, if you open up our menu file we added earlier on, you can see we have menu section and menu item, both as structs with information inside them. Both of these things have ID properties here and here. They're both UUIDs, a universally unique identifier. This is perfect for our use because every menu item, every menu section has an identifier ready, identify exactly which one it is, so SwiftUI can know which is which. Now we can tell SwiftUI to use these identifiers, making the two types conform to a protocol called identifiable. This has only one requirement you must have an ID property, just like we have right now. And so, by saying our menu section is codable and identifiable, our menu item is codable, hashable, and identifiable, that's enough. The code will now build. It now understands how to loop over the menu 
identifying each item uniquely, give us one section, and then make things from that. Now, if I see the preview again, you're going to see we now have lots of Hello Worlds. That's intentional. We have three static rows inside each one of our sections. And if you look at our menu, we have a section for uh, breakfast, then one for mains, then one for uh, dessert, and then one for drinks. So as a result, four sections with three rows inside each. That means we have 12 Hello Worlds here. So it's all working nicely so far, except now, of course, we have a dynamic list. It loads the correct number of items based on what it finds in the JSON. And it means this for each will execute its body, this code here, once for each of our menu sections. Four sections, three hello worlds, 12 in total. Now, obviously we don't want that. What we do really is say actually uh, inside that uh, for each is our section name. You know, do something with a section right here. So we might say, okay, uh, let's say, uh, we'll do text section dot name. And now you'll see breakfast, mains, dessert, and drinks. You can see it's working very, very nicely. And now what I want to do is add inside this for each, another for each to go over all the items in each section. So go over the each section in the menu. And inside that, go over each item in the section. So I'll say the same for each menu section in, section name. We'll do for each section dot items. One item coming in. Oops, Daisy, that's uh, crashed cunningly. <laughs> Text item dot name. There we go. So you can see now breakfast has these things, mains has these things, and then down here will be dessert, and then uh, drinks at the bottom. So now we see lots of table rows with some containing section data, like dessert or uh, mains somewhere up here and some containing item data, like Thai Red Curry or um, Tau Burger and similar. While this works, it's not ideal. There's no visual structure to our table anymore, and so we're gonna break it up. Now, the standard way of doing this in UIKit is with table view sections, and SwiftUI gives us a section view just for that. We can replace this text section name here with a section view using its name for its title. And that'll be used at the start of each section, clearly breaking up our layout. And then this inner for each here, this is then inside the section. So as if you want to understand how we've grouped things. So I'm gonna say, uh, replace this text section name with just section section name, then open a brace for that section, put the for each inside. And now look at it, you can see clearly, here's breakfast items, here's main, his desserts, and there's his drinks. It looks a lot better. Now you might recognize SwiftUI uses what's called the inset grouped style for its tables or its lists uh, by default. So it brings it from the edges and rounds the corners nicely. You might want that, we'll use it elsewhere. Here though, I'm gonna say actually, uh, our list style should be a plain grouped. Don't inset that at all like that grouped bring them edge to edge like that, because we'll have pictures as well around it, so it looks better, I think, brought in slightly. So, we now have the whole thing going edge to edge with sections and items all being loaded from JSON. It's a good start. 